what is going on guys and girls, traders, um, it's the short bear, so um, I took some time today to, to make a video for you, um, talking about basically the trades I made this week. Um, I'm going to be covering other topics um, over the next weeks and months, um, but I wanted to kind of start light to get back into the groove of making videos for you all, and um, yeah, I thought making... Um, a video about what I traded, what I saw in the morning, what I explained, filings and so on could be could be a nice start um, to start it off. All right. Um, so the first trade I took this week was um, SPI. Um, I traded SPI and PTI on Monday. Um, so I'm gonna quickly go over it and and show you the trades too. So um, SPI. Um, what happened was I got stopped out basically. It was a losing trade. I'm I'm not here to make a video about all my winners. I also want you to, to, to know how I basically manage my losers. So um, we're going to start with um, SPI. So what I saw first in the morning was um, that this one is basically uh, doing the same thing over and over again. They basically um, reverse stock split their stock and um, after that, they dilute some more. So it's gonna happen over and over again. It's how basically they make money and, and how they can raise money. Um, they basically keep on diluting and diluting. So what's gonna happen is at the end of the day, the stock is gonna crash. Um, otherwise the company is not gonna make it. So um, I saw the chart. I saw basically we were, tr we were trading in the thousands. So we never really um, traded in the thousands. But they keep on reverse splitting so that it seems like the stock trade in the thousand range, but the bid and the ask were never there. Um, so that was the first clue. There are tons of bag holders, basically. Tons of people that got long and that are stuck and waiting for a spike to basically get out of their position. The second thing I saw was basically that we kind of had a mini trend going on. So we had a trend from like $1 all the way to... Um, to like kind of four dollars and it came back to the two dollar area consolidate some more and yeah we were just about to basically break over this um 375 line which was the breakout neckline and from there on i basically looked um yeah at, at the intraday chart um spi came basically out of nowhere um it didn't trade um in the pre-market um, or basically no shares at all, not giving me basically my typical pattern that I'm looking for, which is basically some, some pre-market action um, and, and specific criteria for me to, to get in. Um, I saw it spike in the morning and it got some pretty nice volume, um, pulled back here, tried to push, but, but as you can see right here, the volume was, was just not, um, not big enough to really push over that um, 470 level. So we just basically broke over the, the neckline, as you can see, it's still the line. We came back down, tested the neckline, and what I wanted to see there to enter short, basically, was um, was a VWAP pop. Um, that's how I, 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 I call it. Um, so the VWAP pop basically gives you the, the best entry um, for the short uh, regarding the risk reward and winning percentage. Um, the thing is, if you enter right at VWAP, I mean, could have been nice like two years ago, but everybody puts their stop at the VWAP. Once it got it gets tested, basically every stop is going to get triggered and you're going to see the pop, basically. That's the pop. And the pop is basically the area of, 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 the, of the biggest fear. Um, it's where everybody is, is going to get stopped out. Everybody's like hitting the bid uh, or I mean the ask. To get off, uh, get get out of the of the short, and then also longs are gonna get greedy, and are gonna get um, FOMO basically, and then are gonna get in, and once everybody is in on the same side, basically covering, so you gotta you gotta go basically you gotta you gotta cover on the ask, and um, the longs are gonna hit the ask too, and once everybody is on the same side, well, it can only go in the other direction, right? So um, that's why I wanted to enter on the pops, but um, we got the first move, first test of the VWAP as you can see, and as you can see right here, I didn't enter, 
because I really wanted the pop. I wanted the pop because it just gave me the best reward, all right? If I enter at 408, I'm not gonna risk the up because it's just over it and the likelihood for it to get tested again is pretty big. So the next area of, of interest is gonna be that 460 level, all right? So I basically got um, right around um, 40 cents or like 50 cents risk. And I mean, where's the next support? It's at like 375-ish, which gives me basically a less than one risk ratio, all right? Risk to reward, um, which is just bad. And I mean, it was also the neckline to support, so I didn't want to enter here. Then we got the pop and it enabled me to basically get in, to, um, in, in my position. Like at 4.35, I only have a 25 cent um, risk and my first target is all the way at 3.75, giving me basically um, a, a 50 to 60 cent reward versus uh, a 25 cent risk. So two to one, it's good enough for me to enter. But as you can see, pop um so the executions on on, t on uh, trade zero I'm, I'm sorry but they are just bad so that's why it seems like that it's always like to the right or to the left but i got in um in the pop um it even pulled down um and yeah um after that what i wanted to do is um i and uh, i added basically on the next pop and once it pulled back on the view app i could move my stop basically to this area to 450 um, for the trade and I could add some more basically because my stop is now um, 448 I'm in from like the 30s so 10 cent stop versus like um, a 50 cent target which gives me a 5 to 1 or so which allows me, uh, allows me to, to get it um, bigger so added some more but um, yeah got stopped out right at it as it spiked over um, so that trade was done. Um, I basically exited, um, but as we um, as we came as as the volume came in and and we stopped right away. So we basically rejected that area here and the breakout here. I decided, you know what, I want to get back in here. So I got back in, um, and the risk was now basically the the higher day, which was right here, which gave me basically a stop of. Um, 20 cents and a target of um, 75 cents. All right, so still great risk reward. Spiked, got out right away, respected my plan, and I was out for basically two losing trades. Um, but I mean, one trade that would have uh, worked here would have basically raised both losses easily. And once we got uh, we, we got basically the, the high of day pop and, and break out, I wanted to to see how it how it reacted, so I didn't short or I didn't long any of this. But um, once we tested VWAP, the VWAP is, as I said, not an area I want to get in at short or long. I don't care. Um, it's it's how it reacts once it basically gets to the other side of the VWAP. That's where I want to get in because that's where the emotions and the volume is traded. Um, so we broke down, but like look at the volume on on. Every single pop before, we got some pretty big, big volume, and um, on that breakdown, normally you would see basically all the longs that are in here, all the longs basically bailing and the shorts going in on the break. But like we broke down by like five cent or something, five to ten cent, and quickly basically reclaimed. Um, and that's basically my trigger for the reverse short. Um, we got some some other. Um, examples here um, in the video you're gonna see um, and yeah popped over so I got long and I added some more uh, as it broke down but as well couldn't really um, break down as much and like the volume was even um, even more uh, even smaller basically so I got long more and I basically bailed on my position as um, um, as we broke down here, but same thing, couldn't break down, so I got long again and covered as we uh, rejected basically the VWAP just before it broke down. So as you can see, every single idea didn't work on SPI, but PTI basically made it all back um, just by one trade basically. Right? One trade made it all back. Um, PTI, let's start with the, with the daily. Um, same thing third company basically coming down it spiked in the past as you're going to see here 
um, spike once here on volume, twice, and um, the third time here. And um, yeah, you, you're just gonna you're gonna notice that we trap basically right around 100 million on that day, on that running day here. Um, here 35 million, and on that day. 32 million, all right? So we have a lot of longs that basically got back because every time it spiked, it got back down and longs are gonna be stuck in it thinking, all right, I'm gonna cover once it gets back, blah, blah, blah. And we also have a lot of longs that are in this range here. So from the $3 to like $2 area, we got some longs there. So every time the stock is gonna pop, some longs are gonna sell their position. Um, the big volume days don't really matter as um, as they are higher, so people are still gonna wait. But the day we're gonna get a spike towards like six dollars or something, we're gonna see a lot, a lot of selling pressure. Um, but that's the time frame I saw, and then I also saw right we got a breakout area at like four dollars, um, and we also look at the filings. I'm not gonna go over filings on PTI this time, just because it's gonna be too much. Um, but um, yeah, maybe in the future I'll, I'll cover it too. Um, for every single play, we looked at the news and the filings. So um, yeah, spike in the morning, same thing, uh, no pre-market action, which I usually don't like. Um, but I really let it basically spike. I let it do its thing. I just didn't care about it. Um, I'm going to show you here. That's PTI. Um, so I let it spike. I had a trade before. That here, I had a trade. I think um, uh, where was it? All right, so it, it spiked here, spiked the second time, and tried to make a new high update. But look at the volume. Like we got some volume divergence, so the volume is going down while the stock is going up, and we then rejected. So I was looking at it here, and I basically waited just to get that 411 price to get tested. I had my order at like 411 to uh, 413, but as you can see, popped here didn't make it, my target was down under the VWAP, at the VWAP pop, but under. Um, so I think I had my order ready for like uh, 97, so even a bit lower, but I would have covered as it reclaimed, so would have gotten out at like um, 93, and entering right here at 413 would have given me uh, a stop of basically 10 cents. So 10 cent against um, basically 20, so 2 to 1, great trade for me. Um, easy trade and yeah it did, just didn't pop but then it kind of reclaimed and touched basically my area of interest so I wanted to get in risking same thing the price here we trended like sideways I wanted a test of the lows couldn't really get it couldn't really get it and I got out basically right here um, what happened after um, so I, I have a special strategy I'm not gonna go over it right now but I, I knew all right I'm gonna be entering and I'm gonna be adding if it works. If it doesn't, I'm just gonna stop out and keep on, on doing the same thing over and over again until um, the signal is not good anymore. Um, so, all right, so um, got in on the first pop here, I believe. Um, on the first pop, um, right here, got down, stopped me out. Um, and um, yeah, after that, Next pop, um, I think I got, yeah, first shot was right, right in here, stopped out, same thing here, stopped out. Then um, I basically had the third trade, which was the winning trade on this one. Um, it looks like I stopped out all, but I really didn't. I just trimmed some, all right? Um, so I, I, I got out of some shares, just to let it test um, to be sure, like Alex does it, AT09, if you know him. Um, he... Um, sometimes stops out one half just to let it test to see how it reacts. If it gets over it, he's going to cover. If it gets under it, uh, if it gets under it, he is uh, going to add back. Basically, and that's exactly what I did. Um, I got short um, right in here as it kind of formed a head and shoulders pattern, um, risking basically the top of the range. All right, and my target was all the way down at like 385 or something. Um, I think. 83. Um, so as you can see, I got basically a what 10 to yeah 10 cent stop against basically um, 50 cent 50 cent profit targets of five to one, um, and I wanted to add more higher to get a better risk reward, 
and yeah so tested the highs I got out of some um, just to let it test got down and then I added basically more right away right in here I, I got a big size just because my stop was so tight like I had a, a seven cent stop or something I think um, pop once more and I added some more as you can see right um, in here I believe added some more so I had my biggest size on my winner just trading the back side and trading the best odds basically um, but but the stop like the risk is still like nearly the same but I got bigger size because my stop is tighter um, so got down more and more and more cover at my first target on this move right here like nearly the bottom ticket I think uh, 87 or something I posted it I think on Twitter um, got some uh, down some more some more and I bottom ticked this candle at 76 which was really nice got to my last um, target basically and yeah covered it all um, super nice day basically made back all the loss on PTI as well as S um, as SPI so as you can see one trade basically made it all back um, yeah um, so um, VK TX on the February 12th So this one was an um, earnings winner, all right? We saw some some pretty nice um, earnings, and I think they 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 really beat their their, their um, earnings on that day. I don't remember exactly, but the news was basically all right. They have really good um, good um, uh, numbers, basically. But what I saw on the day was basically the chart is trending down, all right? So we still have some longs that are back. They want to get out. And we got some pretty big resistance right at like ten dollars um, from here, basically all the way until like here, and even here, like the breakout area was like nine dollars. So um, yeah, we, we got a, a pretty nice resistance band right at that ten dollar mark, uh, which was pretty nice to see. Um, I looked at basically my strategies and thought, all right, what can I play on it? And I put down um, an alert basically at the highs right around like. Uh, 920 or something and I saw it reclaim all the way back to the highs and my, my reverse reverse short strategy basically is a strategy that I use so um, the reverse short is basically all right how can we use the bag um, shorts to get in a stock and then basically squeeze them as much as possible and when they are out when, once everybody's out the stock is going to reverse basically and once once the stock is going to reverse, that's usually my target. I'm not going to tell you everything here in this video, but my target is basically once everybody panics out, and that's exactly when I'm going to be taking the reverse reverse short, meaning I'm going to take the move back. So I'm going to take the whole move up on the upside and move down, um, move back down, basically taking uh, advantage of, of the emotions. Um, and that's exactly what I did on, on um, solo on Friday, and I got every single move basically on it. So um, spiked over the highs. So all right, we're nearly. Um, I'm, I'm nearly certain that that we are gonna trap. Um, so what I did is I basically waited for a retest of the highs just to see all right how strong is it really. All right, how strong is it really? And yeah, we spiked over like 9:32. But as you can see, we got some nice volume divergence. So first time it spiked, we got some big volume. Um, and then it kind of declined, and then on the really last push, the volume declined even more. We pulled back, and that's where I, I, I entered, all right? So on these spikes, as you can see, we got some nice liquidity, some um, 30,000, uh, 55,000. Uh, so we got some nice liquidity for me to enter the trade. So I got in um, my, my first starter. I think I had half my share size or something, and added to like full size right in here. And so it's back. Um, this time I didn't cover any. I wanted really to let it test um, 935, 9, like 38 or something, or a hold over that 934 uh, mark, 935 uh, would have gotten me out, at least some or maybe all. Um, but we rejected, and that's where I knew, all right, you know what, I'm going to be adding bigger. Um, we got some nice liquidity. I'm going to be able to get out even if it spikes. So let it test, and on that pop right here and down, I added basically I doubled up, and my target again never view app. My target is even lower or above it, but never view app. 
um, I had really, really big size, um, unusual for me, and I decided I want to cover my first sh uh, shares at basically the next uh, support line. So resistance becomes support, as you know. Um, we got down. I exited basically my first position. Uh, my 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 first, um, I think, one uh, third or something or one half. I don't remember exactly. We got down to nine dollars. I knew we were about to bounce and the start. Keep in mind, has good news, but I knew all right. All the longs here are trapped basically, and that's where we traded the most volume. Um, so I uh, exited uh, all at nine o three, covering everything. So it popped, and then it got down. But like you never know. Um, I'm was really happy about about this trade. It basically, um, it basically gave me um, one of the the biggest trades I had um, this year. After that, I also had a trade on um, works. So works, that's the trade here. Not the best trade on my side, um, but I I wasn't small. Like as you can see, the liquidity really dried up uh, right in here. Um, and yeah, what I saw was works um, really trapped. So we it was a chat farm. I'm not gonna mention the the, the person that did it. But um, yeah, um, just basically a pure pump and dump. This this one has absolutely no reason to be up at all, at all, and it did that in the past. So I'm gonna show you quickly the daily. Um, here we trapped a lot of people on that day right here. So we got some volume um, that trapped basically longs. All the longs here are trapped now on these days and are are gonna wait for the spike to get out. So we got some pretty nice. Um, overhead pressure basically. Um, so once it, one second, uh, once it um, trapped and got down, I didn't trade it. I saw it and I thought, all right, it's going to do the same thing as as all the stocks. And so like, um, I think ABCO did the same thing and works on the first day did nearly the same thing. And and another um, stock, I don't remember exactly the name. Um, so we got down, down, down. Um, even like. Got red on the day and so and so on. Spike back to the to the previous support area, which is now resistance. And double top there. Um, form of support right around seven dollars. And once we broke down and kind of traded in that range, I basically thought, you know what? If it's gonna break down, it's pre probably going to break down pretty hard because we don't have any reason. The fundamentals are bad. Um, the chart is bad. Everything is saying to me, all right, it's gonna get down, and the data really proves it. So I got um, in my first starter right in, in here, I think, um, yeah, right in, in, in these candles here. I think if we're going to get an, an instant breakdown. And I was willing to risk all the way, like, at, at 740. So um, nearly, I think, uh, like 50 to 60 cent. I don't remember exactly. I think 50 to 60 cent. Um, and I was willing to get it in small here to add bigger um, to the upside, but I wanted a small piece um, in here just if, if it drops down. Um, after that, we got a quick spike, and I decided, you know what? Actually, I'm gonna cover all and wait for the for the next move over seven to really get my my, my bigger size here. But then we kind of rejected on that big volume, and I saw a big seller come in, so I decided, you know what? I'm gonna be re-entering, so I re-entered there. Waited, waited, waited. I wanted somewhere at like 7.30, I think, or 7.25, which I couldn't get. I got down more, and I added right in the, in here just a bit, as much as I could, basically, but I could, really couldn't get any... Um, I think right here, where was it? Right, where did it go here? Um, but basically, I added some more. Um, it tried to get down here. So, so to, to really break down, as you can see, 21,000 shares, and then it really couldn't move back down. So once I see that, once I see a breakdown of a really, really, really um, big support line, which you can see, like, if you can't just miss it, there is a support line, you see it. Um, it broke down, but, like, no volume, no panic, no nothing. So I decided, you know what, um, let me just um, cover some, well, was it so here, here, and I... I think I covered um, some right in there, some, somewhere. Basically covered here as it kind of double bottomed and I, I saw basically no panic, no big sellers. So I just stepped out of the way and as you can see, bounced from there. Um, Wednesday, 
I played G E R N, um, which was one of the nicest plays um, this week. Like one of the most predictable plays. It was really easy. Just went my way right away, and um, yeah, just basically, it's it's really 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 predictable what it did. What some here. So we're gonna go over actually the daily first, and we're gonna go through the filings on this one just so I can show you exactly what I saw. Not everything about the filings, I'm gonna have that for the chat room and um, and so on. So I, I always make the, the, the list and, and, and go through the filings live in, in chat and post everything before the market opens. But as you can see, um, we had, so basically it's also a third, like it gapped down big back then. I'm pretty sure it was some kind of, uh, of news about their drug not working and so on. But as you can see, we got some big volume traded above. So a lot of long strap waiting for the spike again to get out. And we have a lot of dilution going on in this company. So I saw it um, in the morning kind of get, got down, 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 but no real volume for me to enter. And I wanted it closer, uh, closer to like 160 for me to enter in pre-market risking basically the 170 area. And um, yeah, waiting for the fade uh, from there on. Um, um, but basically I couldn't get it, so um, I waited a bit uh, until like right before 9 a.m., so right in here in these candles. I couldn't get a, a lot up here, um, up here just because of the liquidity, but it was a really pretty nice um, stress-free win. Um, so you saw it basically spike on VWAP and then it kind of got down, rejected. So we had a, a resistance area at like 155, 175-ish, um, giving me uh, the opportunity basically to add in uh, with a small risk. Um, this isn't a big RR trade, but it's um, it's a nice, easy winner, basically. Um, so we're going to go through the files. Um, G-E-R-N. Um, and we are gonna first look at um, the S3s basically. So what do we have, what can we use um, and so on and so on. So we saw basically, so I'm gonna show you right away, that's um, kind of the things that I do. Um, click on the SSE Edgar link right here and you're gonna see the filing number which is here. And from there on you, you can basically see, all right, what do we have, what kind of, um, of fits together. And you're going to see, so they had an S3 and they amended it, change, uh, changing some things, um, and posted the 4 to 4 5 um, after that, um, and, and right away on the same day posted the effect filing, making basically what is in the S3 usable. All right, um, the 4 to 4 b is there to basically um, tell you how much and uh, at which price they will drop or they can drop. Um, and you're going to see here, um, they offered basically 100 million shares um, in their S3, I believe, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And out of that, um, they still have 62 million left to drop, basically. All right, so I know, right, they have 62 million um, in, in the filing. Doesn't mean they still have it after that. It's um, basically on this date, they still have so much... Um, to drop basically. Um, so after that, one second, so that's it. So I knew, all right, that's what they have. And um, wait a second, so. Yeah, so as you can see, it was an, um, an ATM that was left, I believe. Um, so we're gonna go through the Q3 actually just to see how much they have left of it. So that's what I did in the morning. Um, and I saw, all right, they diluted. So I checked out basically this 10 Q, the last one and the last one before, and I saw that. Um, after that, I looked through the cash situations. So they have 12 million left as of September 30th. Um, and um, yeah, so the, the Total current liabilities um, are four million four hundred thousand. Um, the total current assets uh, one hundred sixty-eight million. Uh, so that's four million. And here um, one hundred sixty-eight 
170 nearly million so um, that was kind of a bad sign at first so I, I looked through everything I'm not gonna go through that you know, so because it, it would take up like 10 to 15 minutes uh, but I basically looked through um, my my keywords basically just to see how much of the ATM they have left. Um, so let's see. Uh, Somewhere, let me check out something before I tell you. It's... All right, that's why. Um, so basically they um, stated everything in the 44B5 and the 44B5 came out after the 10th um, thank you and that's why basically they um, they can't um, it isn't disclosed basically in the thank you but um, yeah so we saw in the morning that they definitely was some dilution going on and that's why um, I wanted basically yeah, to, to short it um, there was pretty much a, a big dilution I know there are bad loans and after that, all I needed was basically a good risk to reward trade. Um, so I got out here, uh, got in here, wanted a spike basically higher <coughs> towards 160 to really get the bigger size and risk of 170, but we didn't get it. Spiked on once, um, as you can see, biggest volume at the open and then fading volume. Um, tried kind of pushing on that move here on some bigger volume, but we stopped. And as we move down, I decided, you know what, I want to be to be exiting soon. Wanted in 144, uh, 34, but we saw some bitter and some someone absorbing right in here. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to be exiting. So I I, I covered at about 38, and that was basically it for G R um, G E R N. Um, I thought we could go uh, through the filing some more, but I'm going to make another video talking about uh, a bit more of, of of the fundamentals and so on if you want me to. Um, next one was um, solo the first day um, the first day on solo for me was um, where where to six solo uh, on on that day I trade did I trade it on on that day yeah I believe I did right in here kind of I got short here added some more and stopped out but that was right around it I believe um, but the second day I was pretty excited because I knew um, that I wanted to short it in pre-market um, and yeah that's exactly what I did um, I um, waited to see all right where is the top in the pre-market and I saw right we got that 650 area um, and then at 7 a.m. we got some more volume so what I did was um, as it rejected basically seven dollars I got in my first piece Spiked and rejected, and on that bounce, I let me make it bigger for you. Actually, once it rejected, I decided you know what I want to get bigger, so got bigger, got down all the way to 532. But what I wanted was basically move down uh, towards the next support line, which was like five dollars. And I thought, all right, bounce and maybe then crack down. But as you can see, didn't work that way, it um, kind of supported there it formed the kind of bubble bottom spiked some more towards the view app so i entered my first chair size as it uh, not rejected view app but rejected just under it so got bigger and then spiked even over it so the view app popped so that's where i want to get in even more so i got in a um, bit bigger than the, this ad here risking basically for the ad this area at four uh, is at 614. the form of uh, triple top slash kind of um, an shoulder pattern got down um, and yeah I was waiting for the for the breakdown but as you can see kind of dropped here and in, in 20 minutes the market was about to open so I didn't want to spike because I'm gonna tell you something here at 9 a.m. that's 
the time where where most stocks reverse either to the upside or to the downside but they usually change the trend until 930 so once we spiked um, we, we got down here but couldn't make it past I decided you know what um, I'm gonna cover here so I covered here half of my shares got up got down even before the market opened but there I wanted to spike and then open week spike into that area and move down but we couldn't get it, it spiked over and I covered basically the rest right in here. So it was a pretty nice winner, but a, a smaller loser than anticipated. Um, got in right in here, some more risking basically the highs, but these here and um, yeah, broke over. So I had to cover. So at that time, I think I was red on the day then. Spiked over, stopped and that's where I got in right in here really nice size we just had rejected basically the pre-market highs which were right around uh, right around 670 i believe if i remember correctly and then we got down halted halted twice um i even added right in the pop um but the problem was i didn't cover any like i'm not gonna lie i um, didn't cover into that move down breakdown because i really wanted 430 which was as you can see um, the level we closed at basically on the previous day, and I thought we could gap close on that day. Um, but reclaimed, reclaimed, um, I think I covered some in here. And as we rejected, I added it back, um, wanting to uh, to risk off that, that level right here, which was right around VWAP, just over it, and um, a good resistance area from the morning where we traded volume. Um, but as we broke here 540, I decided I want to cut it all. I saw the tape and I saw some big buyers stepping up, volume coming in. So I decided, you know what, I want to be out and I want to be out right now. I'm not going to let it test. And I got out all for actually a, a pretty nice winner just because of the size I was trading. But still um, a smaller winner than, uh, than I wanted. Um, after that, um, RBZ came along, which was a really big and nice winner it just absolutely just um just just fit to to the to the criteria i wanted to have for the short and um, just really worked out exactly like i wanted it to um according to the data basically not like i wanted to but the data says what i need to do and i just do it um so spike in the morning rejecting basically the high so basic double uh, topping here so I decided I want my first piece on the next bounce. Just I didn't want to short here because it could just curl up and, and get up. But that's a pretty nice and, and deep pullback you don't want to see on stocks that are strong. Um, so it popped up and I got in at 234, which was near the top right here, which, which gave me a really nice entry, as you can see. Um, and then we basically tried to break down, couldn't make it. Second time, we even broke down those um, lows. But we couldn't make it past that and, and we reclaimed and kind of popped over it so I decided you know what I'm gonna be covering here. It's basically too strong and we are near market open. I just want to give it a little bit of time and just let it do its thing. Uh, so as you can see it spiked so right around here I didn't know what, what I wanted to do so it broke out meaning um, I don't want to be short but at the same time didn't want to be long at all on this one. Then it got under view app tested as I said don't enter at the VWAP test. I always say that um, just because you're you're really likely to get stopped out. Um, so didn't get here and I just let it be, let it be, let it be. Spiked, tried to break basically the top but really just rejected the pre-market highs. Um, and then the really nice pullback on, on some big volume. So the stuff on volume was really nice because now we had the volume in the morning trap and this volume trap. And as we got down, and crashed basically to the next support line. Um, actually, let me delete everything, all the lines to show you fresh lines. So, saw that one, saw that one basically, this one, and um, yeah, right here. Um, so, spiked over it, crashed down, and then I decided, you know what, I want to be short this. You just tried on big volume twice to get over that pre market high and couldn't just. We just couldn't make it. The volume is fading now. We are gonna enter basically a period where no volume is traded, meaning all the longs are now bagged and they are looking to cover basically. And when there's no volume for them to cover, basically selling to buyers, 
stock is just gonna collapse basically. So got in into the bounce pretty big right here because I just could basically risk 219. So I had a right around like seven cent stop or something and my target was like four below, which meant I could enter big on this one and the winning percentage on this on this kind of trade is pretty high in the high 70s. So got, got in here, traded sideways, 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 and yeah, just crashed down. And this one, just no reclaim, pure weakness all the way down. My, uh, my target was at 170, but I decided to let it spike and add some more just because um, of, of, of how weak it just was. Just the tape, the constant selling, no kind of manipulation or anything. So spiked up, and what I did was I looked for the deep. Pullback. That's another thing I'm not going to explain here. I'm going to let it for the guys in the chat. But basically, I'm looking for deep pullbacks. So again, emotional traders cover and, and, and short and so on at specific levels, all the beginners and so on, basically trade emotionally. And I take advantage of that because once every emotional trader is done, the stock is really likely to reverse. So I shorted right in here at exactly 187 adding to my position pretty big, got down, and once we broke down, I decided, you know what, now I don't want my stop to be 219 anymore, the stock just showed me the weakness and showed me that it can do lower highs and so on and so on, so I decided to put down, again, that's risk management, that's another thing we discussed and, and so on in chat and with all the trades I, I work with. So now I, I basically took down the stop from 219 to 193, which meant either way I'm in the green so I can even add more. So I added even bigger right in here at like 182 or something I believe or 180. Um, then it's back, it even tested my, my level but I wanted to test over under it, just let it test how it reacts because it's likely to, 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 to not make it if there is no volume basically. No volume means no buyers to, to, to get over the sellers. Um, and we rejected, moved down, down, down cracked under it and I decided, you know what, I'm going to be exiting now. I, I, I got out a bit early just because of the liquidity I got. I didn't want to get stuck in anything. So I covered some at like 174, 175 I believe. Um, covered more into the move down towards 160, I think 161 even. So I, no, 163 then I believe. I really, or 164, I don't remember exactly, but basically near the bottom ticked it got over, got over, I wanted to see maybe a flush um, at the end of the day, just because of, of the longs that are back and maybe big players that want out, um, but we didn't get it, and I covered the rest at 170, giving me, I think, a cover average of like 167 from an average of like 190-ish or something with the bigger size, so I had a uh, really a, a nice size on that one and as you can see we got some nice um, some nice volume here to um, to cover um, and that's why I also covered in pieces normally you don't see me scale in and so on or, or scale out but on um, this one I had so much size that I just really couldn't do it otherwise um, on Friday same two plays as on Thursday, Solo and RBZ. We got a lot of runners this week, like a lot of things, and I just stuck to my plans and to my strategies. I didn't want anything to do with uh, with things where I don't have any data or just over trade. Like it's gonna happen a lot to new traders. Just you're gonna you're gonna over trade basically. Um, one second. Um, it's gonna happen a lot that you're gonna overtrade, thinking, all right, the volatil uh, volatility is there, plays are there, I just want, don't want to miss it, but that's exactly why you're gonna miss every good play and just basically give your whole mental capital away just because you want to trade, which is completely false, as you know. So, um, the resistance areas from the previous day came in play today on RBZ, or basically, um, I mean, yesterday, today's um, Saturday. I wanted to scale into this one risking two dollars, all right. Two dollars was the biggest line for me, it was the line of the breakdown and it also meant that I could scale in really nicely because we had some clear resistance areas. The first resistance area I saw was basically 175-ish, um, 180-ish, 
um, where it basically traded the whole past day. So 180, as you're going to see here, traded here, rejected, rejected, found support, got under it, rejected. So it came and played the whole day, basically. So I wanted to get in at 180 and then add some at 190, risking $2, basically. And the whole move down was the reward. Um, I'll show you here. Uh, not here, that one. So um, got into... Um, in into that spike here, um, found some, some volume to get in this one. Um, so basically what happened was all the shorts that short here and are, are thinking, all right, we're going to move down completely, are basically the ones that are going to get squeezed. So emotional traders, again, same, same thing. They are not waiting for the best lines. They are basically shorting right away and are, are emotional. Uh, emotional. And once the volume just isn't there to cover, it's just going to jump to the upside because there is really no volume for them to use for them to cover so they're going to look for liquidity and the liquidity will be higher so spike towards 180 got in a piece i think at 176 or 175 or something and um at 180 uh, as it rejected and yeah we got down 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 my target was basically the lows here and the target um right here which was the support that it um, tested um, the day before and also support from the morning so got down, as you can see here, um, near bottom tick, I think this candle or this one, or where was it? Just, I didn't get a lot of here um, just because of the volume. Like I didn't get a lot of size here, first of all. And then here, same thing, um, had, a, had a, a lot of um, problems covering. So covered my first share size got down. And then I saw at 158 to like 159, we got some, or at 158, we saw some absorbing going on on the bid, and no big sellers coming in to basically push it down. I thought everybody is gonna have their their orders at 155. So you know what? I'm just gonna front run them, and I'm not gonna wait for the the, the volume to fade at like 12 or like 1 2 p.m. I'm just gonna cover it here because I saw some liquidity and I just basically got out. Um, next one and last one for this video was solo. Um, Solo on basically the third day now. So um, I'm gonna show you the daily chart quickly. Um, as you can see, we got a nice um, reverse hammer candle right there. Inverted hammer candle here, trapping a lot of longs. Uh, I still don't think that Solo is gone, to be honest. I just don't think it's gonna fade off nicely. It's gonna do something else. Um, but I saw everybody like kind of talking about, yeah, solo is a short, now it's the backside, um, believe me, and then and then. If, if you look at your data from the previous couple of months, you're gonna see that it's just not correct. It's just, you, you, it's, the, the thing is, everybody's kind of sure it's gonna break down. Everybody's like, yeah, it's the backside day, red day, uh, first red day, I, I don't know, the call it what you want, um, but my data just t told me, no, don't do it, you know exactly what they're going to do, and where did it kind of open, like, SSR, was it like 4.30 or something, and it basically, they, they spiked it up all the way from like 4 to like 4.30, <laughs> and you really think it's, it's basically just... Um, a coincidence that that solo does that no it isn't it just really isn't they know exactly how they're gonna trap you um, but what I saw was all right we got some resistance areas um, for 60 um, next one also uh, 530 and um, right around here at like five dollars so as you can see here tested tested reclaimed here tested 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 so a lot of, of resistance there, and then we had some at, um, uh, I mean here, where it kind of closed at, where it found support. So we had a couple of resistance areas, um, and not really a lot of support. But we had some, some pre-market action, with, which I use as a guide, which was pretty nice. Let me look at, uh, yeah. So, um, on that day, I just thought, all right, what happens when everybody thinks the same thing? They're all going to be on the same side, and once they all cover, it's gonna, whoops, it's gonna pretty much spike. Um, so uh, we got the move down in the morning. Some traders traded. I know Alex shorted right in here and right 
it's here, I think. Um, but we tried it sideways, and the thing is, the volume was just not the way you want you want it to be on shorts, all right? Um, I'm not going to talk too much about that here, but the volume was really telling on this one, and the way it always reclaimed and tested that 440 area, all right? So we rejected here the 435 area, 431 was the, the, the SSR trigger. So we rejected once, got to the highs, and then you think, all right, now we got some long style back, so it's going to crack. But what did it do? Spike, try to get under it, spike once more, bounce, bounce, bounce. Um, so in that area first, I thought, all right, so shorts are going to get in here, here, here. So we got a lot of shorts that are kind of in this area, 430 to like 460. My stop is going to be tight, so it's going to be 435-ish. Um, and I can enter basically at 450, giving me basically um, a 15 cent stop. Um, and my target is all the way at 5, giving me basically uh, 15 cent against 50, which gives me a right around 3.5-ish uh, risk reward, which is really good enough for me. Um, so I entered my first piece, as you can see, as it kind of dipped back here. And yeah, I got down and instantly got stopped out. All right, so we stopped out and triggered SSR at 431, so one cent uh, under it was the low. And then, boom, spike right away snapped back, and that's really my biggest trigger for the um, for the reverse short, one of my strategies, again, that I lay on in, 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 in the chat. And I told everybody in the chat, like, I'm starting a reverse short, you know how it works, you know what I'm going to do, and uh, yeah, they, they know where the target is, they know everything. Um, right away so um i wanted it long actually from like all the way up to 450 area but i just couldn't get filled so spiked all the way up and i got my first piece i think right in the spike like at 460 ish which was good enough for me um but i only got like i think three fourths of my normal size and i was willing to get in bigger because i knew everybody is going to be short on this one so got down again view app not an area to enter so let it spike, got under the view app, that's where I added. And yeah, um, trapped some more, as you can see, low, uh, higher lows every time, once, twice, three times, four, five. So as you can see, every time it, it forms lower highs, all right? And every, uh, low, I mean, uh, higher uh, lows. And um, every time it kind of gets down, some more shorts are going in. And the volume is not fading. Like normally you're going to see big volume at the open, then volume is fading, longs are bagged and they get out. But the volume is constant on this one, right? So we started with like 290,000 shares, followed by basically 100,000 per candle the whole time, all right? And even here, like on that replay, look at the volume. The volume is 160,000. That's like more than half of the, the opening candle. That's, that's a red flag basically, right? Um, and, and look at the time frame, like it should actually, if it's a short, it should break down right in the first 15 minutes. Look at the time frame, you know the rule that Modern Rock has. Um, 10.30, if it's not done by then, it's probably trapping. And I've got an, an, a bit other time frame, um, as you do. I've got it a bit um, before, so I'd like 10.10 um, 10 to 10.15, that's my rule. And yeah, it spiked right away. Um, and I wanted to see if we can pop over five. The target was the high of there, as always, by the week of short. Um, and yeah, snapped back right away. But then I saw some, some sellers coming in. Tape was really heavy. And I thought, all right, um, I'm going to be exiting now because now it's the longs that are getting trapped, basically. All right, high of daybreak. We're going to go back to the, to the highs. No, we are not. So um, I basically took the emotions. Same thing, took advantage, covered, and then we got the big uh, move down, and I thought, you know what? I still don't think solo is done all the way. Like, I don't think it is. But in the short term, we are, we just bagged lungs, and pretty much uh, like a million or something uh, volume, right in here at that $5 range. We couldn't make it past five. We got some absorbing on the ask, and so on, and so on. And if we break down, we're going to break down a lot of that. So, um... I wanted like 480, I stated it, I, I posted it, I got the uh, time uh, stamp and so on and so on. I wanted 480, I told them in chat, do not chase, do not FOMO in, wait for the best prices, wait for the best risk reward, 
get in there. So for uh, 80 was the line, so I waited, 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 let it test um, for 80 and got in basically. Or I think I got filled even on that candle, but as I said, um, trade zero just just shows it shows it like really uh, bad. I don't know what 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 is going on with that, but um, I got in into the spike, and as you can see, it was the high basically. Uh, got down sideways, tried to break, absorb, absorb, absorb. Same thing, no volume, no volume at all. How do you want to get over it if you got basically all the sellers, so 1 million sellers right here and only like 300 shares, 6,000, 8,000, 2,000. So as you can see, now volume is fading, all right? That's consolidation, that's a long consolidation, all right? Volume is coming in constant. No volume at all in the cost of consolidation. It's not going to make it. Um, Straight sideways, got down, down, down. My first target was set for, I think, uh, for... 454 or something? Uh, or 52, I don't remember exactly, but right around there. So I covered my first piece as it broke down, waited, 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 maybe for an ad, maybe not, but I knew already if it reclaims VWAP and trades over it, I'm gonna be covering. My average is great, so I don't care. Uh, I was up a, a lot on that day already. And yeah, traded sideways, and once we broke down and kind of got that lower high here, and I saw, all right, we tried to push here on a bit more volume or it broke down on, on bigger volume. Um, I thought, you know what, it's probably toasted. So I added some more back to full size, basically what I covered here. And then we basically broke down, right? So we, we had a lot of, of snapbacks here. So big orders going uh, going out and so on and so on, hitting the, uh, the, the ask and so on to get out. And once we broke down here, you can see snapback, segment snapback broke under it, but then snapped back. So that's not what you want to see on a short. You want to see panic and volume. I know SSR was on at that point, so that's the reason why. But um, yeah, I, I decided, you know what, I'm just not gonna not gonna do it. I, I said solo is not done. It's still my statement, solo is not completely done. Um, so we're gonna see on on, on, on Tuesday, because Monday is, is, is uh, closed, um, what, what it's gonna do, but I still think it's not done. And yeah, I covered everything right in there. So as you can see here, 440. Um, and yeah, I was done for the whole week. Um, so really nice week. We got some more volume that is coming in because of um, solo. Um, Money is flowing back into the market, which is really, really nice to see. It's it's giving us basically multiple plays, a lot more longs basically, because the market, the problem is, the market is so full of shorts right now, which were not there before. Um, it's it's kind of crazy and, and the, the like miseducation and so on in this market is crazy So everybody's shorting the first pop and so on and so on not, Basically not knowing what risk management is they're gonna get squeezed and so on so that really caused the faders to um, To change But now that we got to play like solo a lot more longs are like uh, are in the market like um, Filled with emotions, with all right, it's gonna go to the moon and so on, like solo. So it's it's really trapping a lot more lungs, and and um, this results basically in, in a lot of fades and bigger fades, which is really nice for us, for the bears. All right, um, that's it for today. Um, I hope you you like the video. It's um, a pretty long video, so if you listened until now, thank you very much. And um, yeah, write write me a message on Twitter. Uh, post something, um, tell me if you like the videos, and uh, yeah, maybe I'll do a weekly um, recap um, every week, uh, talking about the trades and so on. If you have topics that you like, uh, that you would like me to, to talk about, just um, tell me and I, I'll make a video about it. Um, Alright, uh, see you on Twitter, see you on Tuesday, um, if you're in chat, and um, yeah, see you.